Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Sunday service. You know what a wonderful day it is. Please help me to stand on your feet right now. Turn to your neighbours, give them a big smile. You know, tell them that you are so happy to worship God with them today in church. You know, my friends, I'm meditating on Paul's opening statement in the book of Ephesians. You know, he says in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. And even as He chose us in Him before the foundations of the earth. You know, Paul must have been so excited even as he proclaimed that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing and He has chosen us. You know, my friends, it is indeed an awesome privilege just to be called a child of God. And this morning, I want you to be as excited as Paul, even as he proclaims the blessing of God upon uh, and, and express it. This morning, let us be excited in the presence of God. Amen? Help me to put your hands together. Let's give God a clap offering this morning. Hallelujah! Surrounded by His goodness 
Come, let's just lift up our hands right now. Just open your mouth and just pray in the spirit, shall we? Shudriya la karaba, dariya la karaba, dariya la karaba, dariya. Shudriya la karaba, dariya la karaba, dariya la karaba. Just reach out to Jesus. Just send your love to Him. Lord, we worship you in the beauty of your holiness. Shudriya, you who inhabit the praises and the worship of your people. Shuduri ala karaba, dari ala karaba, dari ala karaba, dari shuduri ala karaba, dari ala karaba, dari ala karaba, dari ala shuduri ala karaba. Lord, we love you, we worship you, we bless your holy name. Shikaraba hode, shikaraba hade, ala karaba, dari ala karaba, dari ala karaba. Shri Karabahu ni ala Karabahane ala Karabahane Lord, you're speaking to us. Lord, you're drawing us closer and closer to your presence. Lord, we love you. We worship you. Hallelujah.
follow Jesus because he's your all why don't we just give him a big clap you will really really mean that if you really really mean that hallelujah amen give him praise this morning the Bible says that when we come before God let's make a joyful noise yeah hallelujah somebody go Woo! amen praise God Father, we want to thank you this morning. We can come before you in the presence like this. Lord, in freedom to worship you. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, there's joy, there's liberty. Lord, we thank you that you're speaking to each one of us very deeply, very profoundly. Bring us step by step from glory to glory. Lord, we are the followers, our disciples. We are taking our cross to follow Jesus. And Lord, we give you all the praise. Why don't we just take a moment to sense the presence of God here. Just lift up your hands. Let's take a minute. Let's begin to pray right now. Let's open your mouth and just pray right now. From the front to the back, from the left to the right. Come, let's just pray really strong, really louder. That's right, just lift up your hands, lift up your hearts. Shuduri ala karabaha, dari ala karabaha, dari ala suduri ala karabaha, dari ala karabaha. Shuduri ala karabaha, dari ala karabaha, dari ala suduri ala karabaha, dari ala. Shi karabaha, dari ala karabaha, dari ala karabaha, dari ala karabaha, dari ala karabaha. Oh God, oh God, this morning, Lord, we want to pray for Pastor Kim Hock. We just pray for complete healing. Heal him of his cancer. Liver cancer be healed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we just pray for all the jaundice to be drained from his body. We pray for the tumor to disappear in his body. We pray for complete healing in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for sustaining him, for sustaining Pastor Lily and the entire family. This morning we pray for Brother Amos. We just pray you heal him of meningitis right now. We just command the pain to go in the name of Jesus. On the cross, Jesus, you took our infirmity and bore our physical pain. That by your stripes, we are completely healed. Brother Amos is healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we just pray this morning for Professor Doug Peterson. We pray you heal him of his glaucoma right now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We pray for the pressure in the left and right eye to go down. We pray for the surgery to be a complete success. We pray you restore his vision right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just take 30 more seconds and pray in the name of the Lord. Speak into my heart, take out every wall, set your fire within me, you are my own. Speak into my heart, I hear you when you call, I will Give the Lord a big hand right now. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 How many of you can sense the presence of the Lord this morning? 
I want to thank you for praying for Pastor Kimo. I just went to visit him. He's very weak, but at least he's walking. He's about, he's having breakfast. We thank God for that. I want to thank you for praying for Brother Amos. You know, he's, he's uh, suffering from meningitis. He was in severe pain this whole week. And we, I want to thank you for praying for Professor Doug. I know that he's watching even right this moment. And your prayers mean a lot to him. And he couldn't come for uh, the Bible study because his glaucoma has worsened. So last weekend, he lost 99% of his vision. And so, but because so many people are praying, God did a wonderful miracle. So the pressure has been released. Uh, God says that, I mean, the doctor says, sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking about God. So the doctor says that, um, that there's, there's a good chance he can get his vision back. Uh, but this few weeks is critical, so we just keep on praying, right? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, come on. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Bless somebody, and then you will be seated. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. Hallelujah. I want to welcome all of you to City Harvest Church this morning. If you have a new friend with you, please do remember after the service, bring them to the hot spot, uh, Hall 605. There is... A free complimentary coffee, handcrafted coffee there for you. Will you turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say thank you for coming? Yeah, this morning we are so honored. We have uh, two senior pastors, Pastor Caleb and Pastor Phoebe from the famous Mara Sharon Church in Surabaya, Indonesia. Very, very big ministry and they are here to worship God with us. Can you just stand up right now? Let's give them a big hand. Pastor Caleb and Pastor Phoebe, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. In three weeks' time, we'll be celebrating Easter. From Good Friday to Holy Saturday to Easter Sunday, we'll be having three days of evangelistic Easter drama. Now, I've already started three weeks of fasting for this event. So I started from, sun, uh, from Monday, so I'm going to fast all the way to the Easter Sunday. I want them to invite you to fast together with me just for three days, just for three days before Good Friday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 4th to the 6th of April. Can you fast together with Pastor just for three days? Yeah, turn to your neighbors and say, let's try to fast together. Yeah, amen. Now, this weekend, you will find an Easter prayer card on every seat. And there's also a pen placed on your seat. Can you just take it right now? If you don't have a card or a pen, please lift up your hands and the ushers will pass it out to you. Yeah. So if you need a pen or a card, just put up your hands if you don't have one. I want you to just take a few minutes to fill up the cards with as many family members and friends that you're praying for, yeah? So let's just pray that God will give us a chance to invite them and they will all say yes to come. And this Easter, they will respond to the gospel and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. Can you just take a few minutes? Uh, I, I fill up mine yesterday. I'm praying for seven people that they will come and that they will respond to the Lord, yeah? So fill in as many names as you can, yeah? Now you will have to fill the names twice. One copy for yourself, another copy for the church. Now why? Because from tomorrow, from Monday tomorrow, our intercessors will be praying day and night for every name. They'll be praying that you'll be successful to reach out to them that they will want to come to church, that they will respond to the altar call. So afterwards, you can take your time to keep on writing, yeah? When the offering buckets are being passed around, can you please tear off the church copy and drop it into the offering bucket, yeah? So if you can just do that, uh, and at the end, we're going to pray together. We're going to pray for our family members and friends to all respond to Christ. Pastor Aris, where are you? Let's just collect God's tithes and offerings. So you just keep feeling, and after that, when the offering bucket's being passed, just drop it in so that from tomorrow, our intercessors can start praying. Pastor Aris. Thank you, Pastor. Very good morning to everyone. I'm just going to give you just a little bit more time for you to think about those names. And particularly for those of you parents who are writing down your children's name so that many of them will come back again to the Lord. I am standing in faith together with you that you and your household will turn to Jesus and will serve God together in the church. Who can say amen? So take some time to just write. And uh, as you are writing, or if you have already finished writing, let us prepare our hearts 
to give our offering and of course also our tithes to the Lord. As we are entering into the last week of the month and entering into the new month of April, I want you to really uh, obey the word of the Lord and that is to fulfill our tithes and also to give our best offering to Him. How many of you can say amen? You know what church, as we give our offering and also our tithes, we are always reminded that you know, giving and fulfilling our tithes is a matter of commitment. But I want you to know that it is not just a matter of commitment, it is also a matter of obedience. The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. And that is why Psalms 119 verse 36 says this. The psalmist says, Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. You know what, church? In Psalms 119, the author chose to use several adjectives to describe the Word of God. And in this verse, he chose testimonies as the Word of God. So therefore, if you put that into the verse, this verse will read like this. Help me to incline my heart to your Word. Help me to incline my heart to obey your Word, to take delight in your Word, and not towards covetousness. In other words, the opposite of covetousness is actually not contentment, but it is obeying the Word of God. Now, why is that? Church, never underestimate the seriousness of covetousness. Many of us will consider covetousness as a minor sin because, after all, when I covet after my neighbor's stuff, I do him no harm. I just feel jealous only. Hallelujah, right? But church, you must understand, behind the spirit of covetousness, there is a monster lurking inside you. If you don't deal with covetousness today, one day that monster will appear in a very gruesome expression. You know what? In today's world, there are so many things that is happening. Recently, there is a gruesome murder that happened. The body of a social influencer got mutilated. All because there was a family tussle because the ex-husband family coveted after her apartment that is supposed to be bought under their name. Church, never underestimate the seriousness of covetousness. How many of you can say amen? That's why when you read this verse, it makes sense. Because the antidote to covetousness is not just contentment. The antidote is obedience. Somebody say with me, obedience. Now, why is it that obedience is the antidote to covetousness? Because when you choose to obey God, you are breaking the power of selfish gain more and more in your life. You choose to obey God rather than your own selfish gain. You choose to obey God rather than your own pleasure. You know what? Craig Groeschel says it like this regarding obedience. Listen to this. He says, I believe Christians often perceive obedience to God as some test designed just to see if we are really committed to Him. But he says it's more than that. What if obedience is designed as God's way of giving us what's best for us? Church, obedience is not just about you feeling contented with what God has already given to you. But when you obey God, you are actually practicing your faith to trust God that even though you don't have what other people have, God has something better for you. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why in the context of giving, in the context of fulfilling our tithes, it is really this practice of obeying God and trusting God that as we give to Him, He will always give something back to us that is better. It may be lesser, but it is always better. It may be smaller, but it is always better. How many of you can say amen? That's why, church, today, let's practice our faith in God by giving our best and fulfilling our tithe. And all the people of God say, amen. Well, by now, you would already know how to give the offering, there is a QR code over here that you can scan using your bank application or you can also give using the CAC app by clicking on the give icon. 
And if you are giving by cash, just lift up your hands right now. The ushers will pass one envelope to you. And later on, as the bucket is being passed, just put the envelope inside together with the prayer card later on. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we're going to pray two times. The first one right now is going to pray for the offering. So, shall we just prepare our hearts and pray for our offering today? Father, we want to thank you, Lord, that we are obeying you today. From the front to the back, we are obeying your word. And I pray, Lord, that as we put our trust in you, as we practice our faith to obey you, Lord, you are breaking the power of covetousness inside our heart so that we can trust and believe that you have something greater and in store for us. Father, as we give, you open the windows of heaven and pour out your blessing upon each and every one of us. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, City Alvis Church. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Now, ushers, you can right now pass the bucket and make sure that you insert your prayer yeah. card into so the So guys, bucket. you got to tear off the perforated part, the second half of it, you got to put it in, okay? I should just give them a moment to tear off. So make sure that you put it in. Even if you scan the QR code to make your giving, make sure you drop this inside so that we are able to start praying from tomorrow. We want to see every family member saved. Amen. Amen. You know, many, many years ago, I was among the first in my clan <laughs> to get, to give my heart to Jesus. Yeah. And then now everyone is a believer. Yeah, members of our church. So that's amazing. It's the same for son, the same for Pastor Aris also. Yes, Amen. Pastor, correct. Yeah, we're just going to give you some time to drop in the bucket and we're going to pray together. Hallelujah. Pastor Aris, how, how many friends are you going to invite? Uh, over here, I'm prepared, Pastor. I've written here four friends. Wonderful. Yeah, Pastor perfect. Aris, you are just amazing. Last Christmas, you brought your whole, whole row of uh, your My whole family. family. Yes, correct. Oh, they came from all around the world. That's right. Amen. Oh, <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's true, literally. Sister came, different ones came, right. and all that. Pastor Aris' family, they're all scattered in the diaspora. Amen. Oh, diaspora, that's right. <laughs> we are like the Jews, Pastor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But actually, you know, the Chinese also diaspora, right? Yeah. The Indians also diaspora. Yeah, everywhere, right? everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. everywhere. Praise the Lord. The Indonesians are also everywhere. Brother. That's true. Yeah, true. The Koreans yeah. are also everywhere. Everywhere as well. Everywhere. Everywhere. Singaporean also everywhere. Singaporean. Yeah. Small little island state, but everywhere. 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 And the amazing thing is that anywhere you go, you hear this accent, Singaporean. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? Uh, one of the lecturers said, every time you can notice a Singaporean, because they always say things three times. Why is that? They always say, you know what? Uh, I think, think, think. I see three times. How can I hide? Really? Uh? Yeah, they always say like this. I right, think, right. think, think. I think, think, think. Then I know that you are Singaporean. Ah, uh, uh, like okay. Can we stand, stand, stand right now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's pray, pray, pray. Yeah, they always say things three times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Think, think, think. Stand, stand, stand. stand. Yeah. Pastor Aris, you lead, lead, lead us in prayer, prayer, prayer. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Ken, Ken, Ken. Ken, Ken, Ken. Ken, Ken, Ken. Ah, that's Ken, right. Ken, Ken, Ken. Ken, Ken, Ken. We always say Ken, Ken, Ken. Yeah, Ken, Ken, Ken. Come on. Guys, uh, are we ready to pray three times louder? Because <laughs> you're Singaporeans. Yeah, uh. so Hallelujah, man. right? Amen. Amen. So, let us lift up our hands and pray right yes. now. Come. Shukuru Rabba 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 Shukriya rabba 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 hata kara rabba hantiya. Hallelujah. Father, we want to lift up every single names that we have written down. Father, especially Lord, those that we love, our loved ones, our parents, our children who are backslidden. Father, reach out to them. Father, we pray, stretch your hands over their hearts right now and speak into their life. I want to pray, God, that you create a divine opportunity, a divine appointment for us to invite them into the house of God, for us to, uh, to connect again, for us to reconnect with them, and Father, bring them, Father, this coming Easter. Father, I want to pray this Easter, let it be a time of restoration. Let it be a time of revival. Let it be a time, Father, of coming back to Jesus. Let it be a time where every backsliders, those who are already detached from the church, will come back into the house of God. I want to pray that everyone will get saved. Everyone, Father, will be restored. Everyone will be connected again to the fire of the Holy Spirit. Why don't we lift up our hands and pray for everyone right now. Holy Spirit, 
Do what we cannot do, oh God. Father, as we invite you, do the rest. You do the impossible. You do a miracle, oh God. Father, I pray for those who are sick will be healed. Those who are experiencing a crisis will experience faith in Jesus Christ. Father, I pray, Lord, this coming Easter, Lord, the drama will be anointed. The production, Father, Lord, will send such a powerful message of conviction. And the people, when they watch the drama, already right there on their seat, they want to give their heart to Jesus. I want to pray the atmosphere from the beginning to the end. All the four services will be powerful. So, Father, not by might, not by power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, it's going to be a great Easter. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people say, Amen. Let's give God a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, please help me to turn to three people and tell them, let's believe for a revival. Hallelujah, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you, City Harvest Church. Hi, good morning, church. How many of you can agree with me that the best place to be on a Sunday morning is here in the house of God? Amen. All right, church, I'm here to share some of the power pack events that the church has lined up for us over the next few weeks. First up, we are very excited and honored to have a very special guest speaker with us preaching in our weekend services next week on the 25th and 26th of March. Dr. Yong Hoon Lee is the senior pastor of Yoido Full Gospel Church in South Korea. It is the largest church in the world. He is the disciple and successor of the late Dr. Yong Gi Cho. His visit here to CHC will be aired on the news in Korea. As such, you can expect to see camera crew walking around, taking videos. So what do we do? Now, you don't have to show them your love, all right? You can just relax, sit back, all right? Let them do their thing. Just let them just focus on the service and on God as usual. How many of you can say amen? amen. All right, so do note that our Sunday service with Dr. Lee will be bilingual with on-stage interpretation as our Chinese service members will be joining us. Now, this next announcement is for all the young adults, all right? By the show of hands, how many young adults do we have in this service? Wow, so many of you. I hope you are all young adults, all right? <laughs> we'll be having our first young adult service of 2023 in two weeks' time on the 31st of March, Friday, right in this hall with Pastor Kong. All right, food and fellowship will start at 7 p.m. And I'm here to assure you that there will be more than enough food for everyone. So on Friday, just head down from after work and join us for our time of fellowship. Service will start at 8 p.m. Sharp. So young adults, let's prepare our hearts for a life-changing encounter with God as we embark on the next quarter of the year. Amen? Alright, just now you have heard, Easter is right around the corner. And because this is a season of reaching out with God's love, we want to pray for all our friends and our loved ones. As such, the church will be having a church-wide prayer meeting on the 1st and 2nd of April. On Saturday, the prayer meeting will start at 3.30 to 4.15. And on Sunday, the, the prayer meeting will start at 1.30 till 2.30 at Suntech Hall 606 Theatre right next door. So we'd like to encourage every one of you to join us together and pray for our upcoming Easter services and how many of you are believing that your family and friends will get saved this Easter. Amen. Alright, and now for the main event, Easter. As you have heard earlier, the, our Easter services are happening in just three weeks' time. Turn your neighbours and say, it's just three weeks' time. We'll be having our Easter services from the 7th to the 9th of April. So with COVID-19 restrictions fully lifted finally, the CHC Drama Ministry is excited to present a full-scale Easter drama production this year titled MMT Tomb. Wow, I don't know about you, but when I heard the title, I got blown away already. Alright, so do note we'll be having four services from Friday to Sunday. And our services on Saturday 5pm and Sunday 10am will be in bilingual. So let's invite our loved ones and friends to join us for our Easter services. One more time. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Let's believe our family and friends will get saved. Amen. 
And lastly, this is for all our Indonesian friends and family uh, and members in this place. We'll be having Pastor Bambang Jonan preaching at our Indonesian service later at 1.30 at Hall 606 Theatre. He is the senior pastor of G GBI Medan Plaza. So do head down for our Indonesian service later. We'll have English translation headsets available. So I'm very sure we'll all have a great time with Pastor Bambang. So how many of you are excited for all the events that are coming up in the next few weeks? Yes? One more time, let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You're wondering who is this very distinguished looking sister. Uh, Jeblin is our senior HR manager and you can, you know that she's very eloquent. All our managers are all preachers, you know, and they are just in the admin side of our church, but they're all very mighty preachers and missionaries. So let's give Jeblin a big hand. Yeah, amen. Now, next week, uh, Dr. Yong Hun Lee will be speaking in our services. Under his leadership, Yoido Full Gospel Church has grown from 780,000 members to 880,000 members. So in about 12 years since he took, no, 15 years since he took over from Dr. Cho, he grew by 100,000. So he has done very, very well. Dr. Lee is also the General Superintendent of the Assemblies of God in Korea, as well as the President of the Korean churches uh, in the country. He also sits on the board of the World Pentecostal Fellowship. Now, why is he coming? The purpose of his coming is to encourage us as we rebuild our church. So he wants to come and bring his TV crew to tell the global community the City Harvest Church is coming back strong. Yeah, that's, that's his whole purpose of coming. <laughs> so actually, to tell the truth, I didn't invite him. He invited himself. Yeah, so he said, I'm coming. I'm going to preach. TV crew is going to come. We're going to tell the whole world, City Harvest Church is back. <laughs> yes. So we are very excited about this. Yeah, so, so next week, let's pack all the different services. And, uh, you know, and I want you to know this. He's very good in preaching in the Korean language. He's just not so strong in English. But still, his coming is very important to us. Yeah? Now note that Sunday morning this service is going to be bilingual in English and Chinese, so please invite your Chinese-speaking friends to come as well. Everybody say, God is rebuilding our church. Uh, Father, we want to thank you that the Holy Spirit is here today. You're here to meet with us in a powerful way. I just pray you take away every distraction, take every thought, every distracting thought and worries, anxiety out of our mind. And for the next 30, 40 minutes, Speak to us as only you can. Take us deeper into the divine embrace of, of our God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much. The classical Christian journey towards joy and wholeness has been characterized by four stages. Number one, awakening. Number two, purgation. Number three, illumination. Number four, union. These are the four classical stages of faith. First, there is an awakening that God is calling us out of unlikeness into Christ-likeness. Now, this awakening is caused by an encounter with the Lord. In every encounter with God, it's also always an encounter with our true self. When you see God, you also see yourself. You will clearly see, very clearly, your own unlikeness because of a sin, a bad habit, a character flaw. Every awakening also opens a door. Are you willing to walk through that door and enter into a new relationship with God? Now, it can be scary. For sure, it will require faith. But this is the necessary first step towards joy and wholeness. If you're willing to walk through it, the Holy Spirit will begin to cleanse us and break the hold of unlikeness over us. The church fathers call this, number two, purgation. In Latin, purgation means 
purify because the Holy Spirit is purifying us, purging away the sin, the fleshly cravings, removing those things that are destructive to our spiritual growth. So step by step, step by step, the Spirit of God will reveal them to you. Those wounds and sores, they are festering deep inside so that you can offer them to God for healing. Now, God is very gracious. He won't reveal to you all at once, but only as much as you're able to deal with them. You see, God is a very loving God, and He will be very patient and gentle with us. Turn to your neighbors and say, God is gentle in cleansing you. Uh, yeah. Now, if we live and walk in the Spirit, then you will have the power to obey the will of God. That's Romans chapter 8 and verse 4. Now, this is number three, illumination, living and walking in the light. In the light of the Spirit, in the light of the Word. So by the Holy Spirit, I now have a new way of living, a new lifestyle of being and doing. John Wesley called this being perfected in love. You are changed by God's love, overwhelmed by His love and overflowing with it. So God is perfecting every one of you here in His love. And this perfecting in love will go on and on and on and on until eventually there is union, a complete oneness with God in His love and in His likeness as far as it is possible in this life. You will be as close to God as far as possible in this lifetime. And you'll be transformed from unlikeness to Christ-likeness, which is the goal of your spiritual journey. Now, nothing in this world can be compared to the joy of this union. C.S. Lewis says the ecstasy of it is more climatic than any romance or love or sex between a man or a woman. Jürgen Mottmann says, the joy is so rapturous and heavenly. It is as if the soul is submerged into an infinite ocean of the Godhead and that God is born anew in your heart. Peter says, it is a joy unspeakable and full of glory. The Apostle Paul says, this spiritual union with God is so deep, we will lose ourselves until it's no longer we who live, but Christ who live in us. Hallelujah. Galatians 2 verse 20. Oh, come on, you want to clap? Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. So coming into union with God is the goal of every Christian. So four stages. Everyone say out loud with me. Say awakening. awakening. I can't hear you. Say five times loud. Say awakening. awakening. Purgation. 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 Illumination. Union. And this is what I want to lead our church into. Yes, into growth, into new visions and dreams, into new ministry, missions, evangelism, revival. Yes, yes, yes. But more than that, what is our goal? Union, theosis, one with God in His love and in His likeness. Turn to somebody else and say, union with God is your goal. Yeah, okay. Now, I'm not being fair to you. I have not told you the whole story, the full story. In fact, I want to confess, I have made it sound as if those four things are so easy and automatic, <laughs> when they are not. Because without the Holy Spirit, they are impossible. Absolutely impossible. Coming into union with God, it is the hardest thing in this life. Every step is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, and by the Holy Spirit alone. Especially the final stage of union. To be completely one with God and perfected in this love, having the full measure of Christ's likeness 
as much as possible in this life. This is not possible without the dark night of the senses and the dark night of the soul. What? <laughs> what is this dark night of the senses and the dark night of the soul? What is this dark night? I'm not talking about some new Batman movies. <sighs> Every one of you have experienced some degree of darkness in your life. A season of pain, a season of hardship, a season of suffering. The dark night here I'm talking about, it's not caused by sin or a failure on your part. It is not depression and it is not you backsliding. This dark night is caused by God or allowed by Him to wean you away from the things of this world, from all the things in your life. It is like this. Let me give you an example. At the beginning of our Christian life, although we are forgiven, we are still consumed by sin, just going from sin to sin. We sin, we repent, we sin, we repent, sin to sin. It is like we are eating poison, and it is slowly killing us. <laughs> well, God wants to wean us away from the poison, to get us away from it. So what does he do? He offers ice cream. He says here, don't eat the poison anymore. Eat this ice cream instead. Of course, we love ice cream. Who wouldn't, right? So we begin to enjoy that ice cream. And it's such a blessing. This ice cream is an example of how God wins us over from taking poison. Suddenly, we feel drawn to prayer. We feel drawn to faith in the Word because by faith, we get all the promises. We like it. You know, suddenly, we are drawn to praise and worship, to serving in church, going to cell group because there's so much joy and healing and miracles and blessings and successes. God uses them to break us away from our sinful habits and to turn to Him. But what is the danger? We become fixated on the ice cream. We become fixated on the blessings, on the miracles, on the manifestations, on the good feelings in prayer, in praise, in worship, or the, the joy we feel when we are serving others. We now focus too much on those things until we miss the point, which is loving God. Isn't it true? Sometimes we serve so much. What's the whole purpose? We serve so much, we are no longer loving God. God bless us with so much success in the marketplace. We work and chung so hard. At the end of the day, we miss loving God. So now, God slowly wins us away from the ice cream to eat proper food that will make us grow stronger and taller. So he gives us rice, meat, vegetables, cut down the sugar and the salt. Now, if all you ever eat is ice cream, then rice, meat, and vegetable with little sugar, little salt, they are not going to taste very good, right? We crave for the ice cream again. <laughs> Similarly, people experience the blessings of prayer and faith or the wonderful sensation they get in worship in revival, and they are so fervent at it. Then in the dark night of the senses, God takes away the blessings and the sensation, all the spiritual consolation, all the good feelings, all the goosebumps on the goosebumps. Suddenly, prayer answers are slow in coming. The blessings stop. Worship becomes dry and very boring, and you cannot sense the anointing. We begin to think, oh, God has turned his back on me, or maybe I'm doing something wrong, or God doesn't care, this thing doesn't work. But the truth is, God just doesn't want you to focus on the feelings, the sensations, the blessings, the manifestations. 
So he's slowly taking those things away to purify us so that we can really get to the substance of our salvation, which is loving God and loving His will, that we will still believe and trust and obey Him with or without the blessings, with or without the feelings. So there is a self-emptying going on inside. God is detaching us from the things of this life. Things that you and I don't want and don't like to be separated from. Suddenly, something you love, which may not be wrong, which may not be sinful, which may not be, which actually may be something very good in itself. Suddenly, that thing is taken away from you. You have a dream that you cherish. Now it's not going to happen. A relationship is now being severed and you're suffering for it. You say, I hate it. I don't like it. I object to it. Why is this happening? Why is God taking all this away from me? Because God knows that these areas are standing in the way of your union with Him. They are standing in the way a perfect love. It is just like God asking Abraham, I want you to give up Isaac, sacrifice him on the altar, because Isaac had become his crowning glory, his greatest achievement, the key to his vision for the whole world. God said to Isaac, you're gonna be a blessing to the whole world. God said, Abraham, Can you love me even without the blessing? Even if your vision and dream doesn't come to pass. Can you just love me for who I am to you? Abraham could, which was the amazing thing. Abraham was willing to give up his vision and dream and choose God instead. God wants to bring you to that same point where you need absolutely nothing but God alone. You need no one but the Lord alone. And paradoxically, in those dark nights, you will discover a light such as you have never seen before. You're very quiet right now. Turn to your neighbors and say, turn to your neighbors and say, God will give you, God wants you to love him more than the blessings. Turn to somebody else and say, God wants you to love him more than the feelings. Okay. The dark night of the senses. Now, I want to say this. It is not for the ordinary Christian. It is for the serious believers, the mature ones. Those who already have a lifestyle of prayer, of meditation, of contemplation, In the dark night of the senses, God withdraws His comfort from us. You will find no comfort, no spiritual consolation in the things of God. He seems so far and distant away. Suddenly, you can't feel Him. Your prayer life is now dry and unsatisfying. You pray and you pray and you pray, and nothing happens. All your physical and spiritual senses are numb. So I'm not just talking about your five physical senses. Even your spiritual ones, they're numb. And beyond the senses, in your mind, intellectually, nothing makes sense anymore. Again, the dark night of the senses is not for the ordinary believers. (laughs) Because for most believers, when they can't feel God, when they cannot understand God, and they don't get your prayers answered readily, we simply give up. (laughs) We doubt our relationship with Him. So this will not happen to 99% of you, so don't worry about it. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Because most people cannot handle it. But you see, you are restricting God 
to the narrow limits of your senses and your mind by how you feel and what you can understand. Can you love Him even if you feel nothing? <laughs> Let me tell you, for this is how the prophetic people, I would say to a prophetic people, can you love Him even if you feel nothing? <laughs> All the prophetic people, I say, I feel this. Can you love Him even if you feel nothing? If you sense nothing, and your mind cannot compute what he's up to. Just think about Job. In one day, Job lost his family, his career, his property, and was struck with an incurable disease. In one day, all his blessings were gone. Mentally, nothing made sense anymore for him because Job had not sinned. In fact, God says there's no one more righteous than him in his generation. If anything, he was very fervent and zealous for the Lord. Then why did he have to suffer like this? It doesn't make sense. And emotionally, he had zero assurance from God. No comfort, no spiritual consolation. Physically, he became very sick and was in great pain. Job says in chapter 23, he says in verse 8, but if I go to the east, he's not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But the key is in verse 10. But I know the way, but he knows the way that I take. And when he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. Oh, come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Oh, you want to praise God? Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. You know what Job is saying? I don't see his goodness. I can sense his comfort and consolation. But I know my God still loves me. So even when all the blessings are gone, even when I can't feel him and nothing makes sense to me anymore, I know that God loves me. And it's working in my life to purify me, to refine me. And when this thing is over, and let me tell you, the season will come to pass. I will come forth as gold. What is happening? Job is going through the dark night of the senses. And this was also my personal experience. As a young pastor, God gave me a lot of blessings, a lot of spiritual consolation, signs, wonders, miracles, to draw me into a friendship with Him. I was blessed in every way. I have a beautiful wife, a great career. I was on Christian television in half the world. I was debt free and on course to inherit the global ministry of Dr. David Yonggi Cho. But almost invariably, God withdrew all the blessings, all the favor and the spiritual consolation. Why? Because he's cruel? No, absolutely not. Because it is like weaning a child. You are not meant to fall in love with the blessings or the consolation or the favor. You are meant to fall in love with God and with his will. Hallelujah. And this is not easy. If anything, it is very challenging for me. One day, a disciple of St. John of the Cross said to him, Oh, teacher, there is this cross that I have. I just love it so much. I pray so well with this cross. Some people just like to pray with crosses. John the Cross then said to him, Hey, give it to me. <laughs> you are too attached to it. It's not healthy for you. Give it to me. Learn to pray without the cross. <laughs> 
Does God operate like that? Sometimes. If I am falling in love with the consolation, with the blessings, He doesn't want that. He wants you to fall in love with Him and with His will. John the Cross says that the dark night of the senses and the dark night of the soul are all about detachment. Remember I talked about detachment a few weeks ago? God taking things away from us. And often there are things we are not willing to let go of ourselves. So for sure, you will struggle. But it is not a punishment. It's not because God is doing something arbitrary. It is a good thing. It is actually a gift, a grace from the Lord for your love to be purified so that you can come into a deep, a deeper union with Him. It's just like we're having Good Friday. I mean, why is it called Good Friday? Jesus suffered. Why would it be called Good Friday? Shouldn't it be called Bad Friday? Dark Friday? Satanic Friday? But it's Good Friday. Good Friday is good. If you only live in the realm of the senses and what your mind can reason and plan and control, you will become very easily attached to the things of the world. It may be money, wealth, power, sensual pleasures, or food, or alcohol, or things like that. God has to darken the sensual side of your life if you're going to go beyond the worldly to connect with the heavenly. But because you're so used to the things of this world, detaching yourself will be painful. To detach from the sensual pleasures, from money, from power, it will be hard and it will be challenging. Turn to your neighbors and say, the Holy Spirit will help you. (laughs) Yeah, amen. Dark night of the senses. Now, the dark night of the soul is even much tougher. It's much deeper and even more intense. Again, it is not for every Christian. In fact, very, very few ever come to this place. They ever experience this grace. (laughs) Maybe 1% of all Christians. In the dark night of the soul, God doesn't just withdraw His blessings or His feelings from your senses. God withdraws Himself. There is now a profound sense of being abandoned. And you feel totally lost. Where is God? Where is His presence? God, where are you? Can you still love Him even if you feel He has abandoned you? One of the greatest saints ever lived was Mother Teresa. She served the poorest of the poor in India. Some considered Mother Teresa as the greatest human being of the 20th century. There's a book on her entitled, I Love Jesus in the Night, Teresa of Calcutta, A Secret Revealed. Why is it called A Secret Revealed? Because after her death, her diaries were published. And it became very clear that Mother Teresa experienced the dark night of the soul, not just for weeks, not just for months or years, but for decades. For decades. For decades, she couldn't feel the presence of God. At the beginning of her ministry, when she was in her teens, in her 20s. She had so many encounters. Her life was was a life of continuous revival. She had literally heard the voice of Jesus calling her audibly. That's how close she was to, to God. She could hear Jesus speaking to her with an audible voice in her room. She felt his extraordinary intimacy and God gave her extraordinary visions and dreams and many signs and wonders and miracles. And then one day, suddenly, 
everything stopped. Jesus just took it all away. Why? Because God wanted her to fall in love with His will, which is what she did. She fell in love with God and His will, which was to serve the poorest of the poor. In the dark, or in the dark night of the soul, God doesn't just withdraw the blessings and the spiritual consolation. God withdraws Himself. Of course, God being everywhere, He's always still there. But He's now so quiet. He makes Himself so quiet and He hides His face. And He makes His presence very, very faint. Can you still love Him even if you feel He has abandoned you? In the Gospels, someone could. There's one person who felt abandoned and yet loved God. Who was he? He was Jesus, the faithful Son of God. On the cross, Jesus cried into the darkness of God's absence, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabataini, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? Mark 15, verse 34, right? But yet, to Jesus, even when God his Father was absent, he still loved him enough to do his will. Because remember, not my will, but yours be done. Oh, come on, you, want, you love God, let's give him a big hand. Oh, come on, let's give the Lord a big, big clap, hallelujah. My professor, Frank Makia, he said this, in that feeling of total abandonment, you discover paradoxically the ultimate embrace. So you have come to the point where you need nothing but God. In the absence of blessings, in the absence of feelings, even in the abandonment, you still love Him because God is all you need. Yeah. Professor Makia says, if in the place of utter despair, you can still affirm your faith and trust in God that He is all you need, then this is the ultimate deliverance. This is the ultimate decoration of faith. And you will discover a light such as you have never seen before. At this point, you have finally and completely surrendered yourself fully to God. And He will bring you to a union of perfect oneness and perfect love. Now, I want to say this again. The dark night of the senses and the dark night of the soul are only for very advanced Christians. I won't even say I experienced the dark night of the soul but I experienced for a while the dark night of the senses. This is only for the very serious disciple who already, have, who already has a lifestyle of prayer, of meditation, of contemplation. Those who are already serving the Lord. They are not for those who are easily shaken, who easily become lukewarm or backslide. So if you are still strong, oh, I'm not sure God loves you, it will never happen to you because you can't take it. <laughs> God knows how much you can handle. But for those who can take the dark nights, God is going to do a divine surgery so deep into our soul. Yes, it's going to be very painful, but you will find a greater detachment, a greater self-emptying and come into a higher and more intense loving relationship with Him. So in a sense, this is how I learned zero anger because I was in that place. Again, the dark night is not depression. It's not backsliding 
or due to sin, such that you don't feel close to God because you've sinned. No, no, no. So when you are in a dark season, you mustn't presume, oh, this is from God. God just wants me to suffer. No, if you are living in sin, you should repent. <laughs> if you are clinically depressed, you need to seek professional help. At least go and see a counselor. So how do you know you're in a dark night? How? You know if your desire for God never goes away. I may not feel the spiritual sensation. I may not feel close to God. But deep inside me, the desire for God is still so great. It never goes away. It never wanes. So for me personally, even when I felt so dry and so empty during those years, when I was away from you and locked up, I persevered in prayer, even when there's very little prayer answers, because I was still deeply in love with the Lord. I still wanted to be His loving and obedient son. I still love Him, and I love His will, even though I wasn't sure how is this will for me ever unfold, even when it seems that there's no more visions and dreams. So there is a grace. There is a perseverance. Turn the person on your left and right and say, God will give you grace. Okay, pastor, I'm just an ordinary Christian. How do all these apply to me? <laughs> I'm in the 99% probably will not experience this. <laughs> How would this apply to me? By talking about the dark night of the senses and the dark night of the soul, I just want you to be aware that there are more advanced graces that, and greater depths exist in our walk with God. <laughs> Yeah, your Christian life is not just confessing the word and just getting blessed, give 10% and get 100% and pray for the sick and they get healed. You know, you got demons and cast out demons. It's not just, it's more than that. Yeah, you know. And even if most of us will never experience them, we are all on a spiritual journey towards a deeper union with God. To be one with Him in love and in lightness. Yeah. Amen. Oh, you love him? Let's give him a big, big hand. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. But you must be prepared. You must be prepared that in certain moments of your spiritual life, you must be willing to let go of things. Even if they aren't bad, or sinful. Let me give you a very simple example. A simple example. Even the young people here can understand this. In the past, especially when I was younger, I used to play computer games a lot. I'm a computer science major. I love computer games. And I needed to drink Starbucks every day. Every day you find me in Starbucks buying coffee. I love traveling. I love going overseas. I love shopping. I love entertainment. None of it is wrong. Not one thing I mentioned is sinful. But as I grew in my faith, I realized I can't put so much of my energy and joy in computer games or Starbucks or in entertainment. As God becomes more and more my joy and His presence takes more and more center stage in me. Those things that used to give me a thrill in my senses, they just don't provide the same joy that God alone gives anymore. We are too attached to too many things in this world, to money, career, power, food, sports, alcohol, fashion, partying, sensual pleasures. In and of themselves, most of them are not bad. They are not sinful. But the more completely you want to focus on God, 
the more they stand in the way of perfect love and union. Because all the energy you must put in them and the distraction they will bring to you. St. John of the Cross says that a bird held even by a single thread cannot fly away. Even if it's just a small single thread, that bird cannot fly. It's stuck. It is not free. But God wants you to be free, completely free. This is His goal, that you are free to enjoy His love and free to be changed into His image and His likeness. Oh, come on, hallelujah. Amen. Everybody say out loud. Say, God wants me me to be free. So don't be surprised. As you grow in God, every once in a while, the Holy Spirit will move you to detach from things. And don't become fixated on the blessings. And guys, don't be afraid of sufferings. (laughs) Suffering leads to deeper and deeper communion with God. Suffering for the sake of love, done in union to Jesus. Those kinds of suffering is redemptive. That's why Paul says, my supreme motivation, Philippians 3 verse 10, Paul says, there's to know Christ in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his sufferings. Notice, sufferings, many sufferings. Jürgen Mottmann says, suffering is the shortest way to spiritual union. You want a shortcut to spiritual union? There is suffering. (laughs) That is why in the New Testament, when the saints suffered for Jesus, they were filled with so much joy. (laughs) Shortcut, shortcut, hallelujah, shortcut. (laughs) Let me show you Acts chapter 4, 5, and Acts 5 and verse 40. They called the apostles in and had them flog. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing (laughs) because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. (laughs) This should be an attitude. When you're suffering, you rejoice. (laughs) Shortcut. God, thank you for counting me worthy to go through the shortcut. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen. (laughs) Oh, you want to clap? Give the Lord a big hand. (laughs) This is why there is so much hope when you are suffering. So much hope. Even if you have interior difficulties, like a mental illness or depression, or panic anxiety. God can use them redemptively and lead you into deeper and deeper union with God. One of the greatest minds in leadership, in the study of leadership, is this man called Dr. Norman Shawchuk. He was the mentor of Professor Roger Houser. Prof. Roger was here a few weeks ago. He was his mentor. How I got to know Dr. Norman Shawchuk His was the first textbook I read in my graduate studies. He died of Alzheimer's disease, which for a brilliant scholar is the worst sickness to have. When your mind is is the most, is the greatest achievement to know you're gonna lose all your intelligence in a disease, it's gonna be so difficult. I was so moved by the prayer of Dr. Norman Shawchuk before he died. As his Alzheimer's kicked in and his memory began to fade, when he can't even add one plus one equals two or to hold a fork and a knife to eat anymore. Dr. Shawchuk said this, and I was so moved. He said this prayer, take Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will. 
all that I have and call my own. You have given it all to me. Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. This is enough for me. Wow. This brilliant man had come to a place where he needed absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. But God and his love alone. Guys, don't worry about sufferings. God knows how much you can take. And he will be very gentle with you. If you have no capacity to suffer or little capacity to endure, he will never let you go through the dark nights. So don't be afraid, okay? Turn to your neighbors and say, don't be afraid. I want to close with this. Our spiritual journey is a great love story. How many of you love a love story? I do. I'm a hopeless romantic, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm a hopeless romantic. But our journey with God is the greatest love story. One where we can leave everything behind in pursuit of the one whom we love. And when it comes to God, of course we can leave everything behind. Because this whole world pales in comparison to God and to the love that He has for us. How many of you want a love story like this with God? How many of you want to love God above all else? Why don't we all stand up to worship Him? I tell you the presence of God is here this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Slip up your hearts to Him. Let's just pray in the spirit for a moment. Just love the Lord. Just love the Lord. Shuduri Allah Karabahadea. Shikarabahadea Allah Karabahadea Allah Karabahadea Allah Karabahadea Allah Karabahadea. You dance.
Love him, just love him this morning. Lord, I'm by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. How you love. Just lift up your heart, just love the Lord in the spirit right now. Show to the Allah, Karabaha, the Allah, Karabaha, the Allah, Karabaha, the Allah, Karabaha, the Allah. We love you, we love you, Lord. How we love you, we love you. How we love you, Lord. Shukarabaha, Daddy Allah, Karabaha, 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 Daddy Allah, just give him your heart this morning. Give him your heart this morning. Shuri ala karabaha, ala karabaha. Shuri ala karabaha. Shuri ala karabaha. The king and the king loves me. every eye to close and every head to bow this morning how many of you will love God even if there's nothing in it for you will you give him your life even if there's no blessing no comfort no spiritual consolation will your life have a place for God if there is no success or healing or prosperity can you love Him even more than your vision and your dreams or the destiny that you think you have in Him? While eyes are closed and heads are bowed. How many of you this morning would say, Lord, I love you most. I love you 
only. Lord, I need absolutely nothing but you and you alone. If that's you, when I count to three, I want you to lift up your hands. One, two, three. Just lift up your hands all of this place. Can you just pray in the spirit right now? I love the king and the king loves me. I love the king and the king loves me. How he loves me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. This morning I declare. This morning I declare. And pledge my love for you. And pledge my love for you. Father, I need no one else. Father, I need no one else. Absolutely nothing else. But you alone. You are all I need. I'm in love with you. And with your will for me. Your will for me. Not, my will, Not my will. But yours be done. Can you lift up your hands and just talk in tongues right now? Lord, we are in love with you. We love you most. We love you only. We love you most and we love you only. It's the thing that stands in the way. We don't need to go through the dark nights unless it's the will of God. But we know that things that stand in the way. What is it? Is it your career? Money? Wealth? A need to feel secure? A need to accumulate so you feel your future is secure? What is that thing? Is it family? As, as important as it is. Is it children? As important as that is. What is it? Is it sensual pleasure? Is it the need to feel wanted, to, have, to, to be loved, to be popular? What is it? What stands in the way? that you have to put so much effort, so much of our energy, 
that you feel so tired, you have no more strength to love God and commune with Him? What is it that's become such a big distraction? This morning, can you surrender it? Lord, I surrender it to you because I want to draw nearer and deeper in you. I want to be completely one with you as much as possible, Lord, as much as I'm ready. Lord, I want to come into your perfect love. I want to come to an ever closer union with you. This morning, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. I know He's speaking to you. Surrender that. Surrender that. Surrender that. of you say pastor you're talking about me you're talking about me this morning the holy spirit is moving your heart if you know right now there are at least one area in your life that you need to surrender to god when i count to three just put up your hands one two three lift up your hands out of this place right now i want you to say this out loud together with me say dear lord, dear lord please forgive me please. for putting so much energy for being, so distracted. for being so distracted. I want to love you most. I want to love you most. I want to love you only. I want to love you only. So I surrender this to you. So I surrender this to you. Can take it away. You can take it away. Will you just tell the Lord what it is right now? Just tell him right now. Just Lord, we just surrender it to you, Lord. Just surrender it to you. You know, for, for some people it could be as easy, as simple as computer games. Some people it could be as simple as television. Some people it could be as simple as some food. Or Starbucks, for me it was Starbucks. I surrender it to the Lord. I just surrender it to the Lord. I just surrender it to Him. Shudriya la karaba hadriya la karaba hadriya la karaba hadriya la karaba hadriya Shudriya la karaba hadriya la karaba hadriya la karaba hadriya Shudriya la karaba hadriya la karaba hadriya la karaba hadriya la karaba hadriya Shudriya la karaba hadriya la karaba hadriya la karaba hadriya la karaba hadriya Shudriya la karaba hadriya la karaba hadriya
would you respond to the whisper of that quiet voice? Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Jesus says in Revelation, I counsel you to come and buy from me gold that's refined and fire. For then you will be rich behind the whole sermon as a call from God that you and I can be made so rich in our love, in our union, in our relationship with the Father. He is calling us this morning. He is calling you this morning. A relationship, a journey, a partnership, a life that's so rich with great freedom like what pastors preach. A love that's so free. So come and respond. Come and respond to Him this morning. How many of you can sense God calling you? I don't know what it may be, but you sense God is calling you to something deeper something greater and there is a price certain things are going to be cut away it's going to be painful but you say God I want to respond because I love you most because I love you only if that's you I, I just sense some of the young some of you who are younger maybe a young adult Maybe you're in a relationship that is not exactly glorified. It may be good, but it's not God's best. It's drawing you away from the Lord. And today you say, Lord, I'm willing to put that relationship on the altar. Maybe some of you, it's a job and you're doing so well. This is a season. You feel like so many blessings, so many breakthroughs, but yet it's drawing you away from the Lord. You say, God, I don't know what the future holds, but I'm willing even to surrender this blessing back to you. You know, that's in Revelation, it says that the elders cast their crowns at the feet of Jesus. The crowns are the rewards and the blessings. Every once in a while, we need to cast back our crowns at the foot of the cross. Say, Jesus, this blessing you give me, I surrender it back to you. This morning, the Holy Spirit, I know time is gone, but this is so great because I just sense, I just sense tremendous destiny and it's at stake right now that this morning, some of you are going to make a decision. It's going to radically change the texture of your life and the trajectory of your whole walk with the Lord. This morning, you say, Look, you say, Pastor, yes, God is speaking to me. God is doing a deep work. I want to respond to that call. If that's you, when I count to three, I want you to lift up your hands. One, two, three. Lift up your hands all over this place. All this room right now. This is what I want you to do. I know time is gone. Okay, I just, I wanted to ask you to come to the front, but I think it's okay. You don't have to come because time is gone. Just lift up your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, look at all these hands that are lifted up right now. Tonight, this morning, can you just say this with me? Say, Dear Lord, Dear Lord, your calling is great. Your calling is great. Your love is even greater. Your love is even greater. 
So I respond to your love. So I respond to your love. Give me this love story with you. Give me this love story with you. The most beautiful love story. The most beautiful love story. That I will give up all that is precious. That I'll give up all that is precious. Even life itself. Even life. To love you, to love you, and to do your will, and to do your will. Will you lift up your hands and just love him, and just bless him, just love him and bless him? Some of you are crying because God is doing something so deep in your life. This morning, your life will not be the same anymore. This morning, your life will not be the same anymore. Shuduri ala karaba, deri ala karaba, deri ala. Shuduri ala karaba, deri ala karaba, deri ala. Shuduri ala karaba, deri ala karaba, deri ala. Shuduri ala karaba, deri ala karaba, deri ala karaba, deri ala karaba. Shuduri ala karaba, deri ala karaba, deri ala karaba, deri ala. Shuduri ala karaba, deri ala karaba, deri ala karaba. the Lord can you just give him a big hand right now presence of God. Before you go, will you just hug at least people, at least ten people around you, and say it's worth it to love the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.